it's funny. I um, originally had heard the synopsis of the movie and unfortunately I have way too much personal experience with it. So I said, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And then I saw Natasha, Carrie and Elizabeth and I said, well, get me a box of Kleenex. We're <laughs> going in there. And I went in and of course cried my heart out, but really, really uh, just loved it. So I said, I have to talk with them about it. I've been thinking so much about it and I really started thinking of it kind of in a Wizard of Oz sort of way in mm -hmm. that Katie was kind of needing a heart by, you know, throughout. And mm -hmm. Rachel was needing strength. And Christina was needing kind of confidence to knew that, you know, her problems mm -hmm. were as mm -hmm. big as everyone else's and right, that she belonged. And so kind of uh, starting with Carrie and then going on to Natasha and then Elizabeth, I'd like you to talk about basically what the movie has to say about finding that heart, that strength, that confidence in the midst of grief, in the mm. midst of loss, in the midst of the absence of those things. Mm. That's lovely. Um, I would say that one of the things I think the crucible of grief does is forces vulnerability even against our own best intentions. And so even people who don't, who are protected sometimes get cracked open by that. And I think you're right about Katie being invulnerable in a, in a way with her sisters. Um, mm. And what gets revealed about her is actually that she's quite stunted. She's quite emotionally immature. And there's actually a little girl inside of her who, who um, is feeling really defended and defensive. And um, I feel like she, that, that little girl somehow kind of peeks out from behind the alcoholic and, and is feeling misunderstood. And in, in the film, what happens for her is that um, there are moments of tenderness where that little girl gets, gets some attention. And so there's like a little, a little glimmer of opening into some possibility of um, that kind of growth for Katie, uh, but she's got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say it's a beautiful question. Like yeah. you've really made me uh, think. So thank you. Uh, I I think actually where I really identify um, so much with Rachel is once you've sort of told yourself a story or the world has told you a story about yourself, about like, you know, uh, in both our cases being self-destructive, you sort of take on this narrative um, of I'm a broken person, mm -hmm. you know? And when you put it in this Wizard of Oz terms, it's like something that personally in my life I'm uh, deeply aware of, which is like, I'm so in need of this flip, this strength to be able to say like, hey, that's that's an old story, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, and it's okay to not identify as such that so the strength to then say, I'm, you know, just another guy in the world. I'm not looking at the world and sort of observing it like, you know, Philip Marlowe playing my own tape mm -hmm. inside and beating myself up about the past or anything like that, or feeling, um, cause really what it is, is I, the isolation, like the separateness mm -hmm. that it creates, uh, from her sisters, from her family is in part, um, sort of a prison of her own making because the heart shuts down. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's a very beautiful question when, when you put it that way of it's like the strength to believe that it's safe mm -hmm to trust mm. her sisters, even if they might have judgments about her, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, yeah. it's a nice yeah. question. Yeah. And yeah. the way you've, I think, uh, I, I agree with, with the, the, what, what you, what you're learning or what you saw that we all had to gain at the end. And I think the thing that was really interesting is in the same way Aza wrote the script, which was starting from an idea, not knowing exactly where he was going to end up. I think there was a world because we were filming in real time and there's as much as you can, right? Uh, structure a performance or an arc or an understanding um, from a uh, uh, analytical point of view when approaching a script. But I do think because we were able to film as much uh, in real time and we did actually finish the film with the, that those last scenes, mm. Um, I think we all were maybe a little bit surprised by our sure. reaction on the sofa. I don't think it was our intention. Yeah. So unexpected. It was mm -hmm. never our intention to have those realizations. It was part of the journey of the filming of, like I didn't know that Christina was gonna 
sit with a sense of confidence mm. on that sofa yeah. while her other sisters were actually becoming like the younger oh, more right and I didn't know that I was gonna end up lying down on you guys yeah. and being like that I'm the one that needs like the sort mm -hmm. of stroking yeah. and like that you guys are by saying um it's also a very basic life lesson of like once you sign up for love it's like they're mm -hmm. waiting for you on the other mm -hmm. side yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. There's Very yeah, good. and I also I think there's someone someone just said something to me recently that I I can't un, uh, un, unthink right now, which is if you if you uh, start out if you if you end a project a film with the exact result is how you started from, mm -hmm. then you learn nothing. <laughs> and so yeah. I do think that we all learned something at the end when we got to the sofa and sat in the father's chair. And we we uh, we also surprised ourselves with what the sisters learned because we got to learn it like through them mm -hmm. while we had the the while yeah. we were filming. Well, it's also stuff. like af like that your assets are your defects. Like when I'm thinking mm -hmm. about Carrie's mm -hmm. character, it's also that like she still feels like you know like the uh, the one in charge somehow in mm -hmm. that scene. But yet, like you're saying, it's now with the heart of like we Smiling. want you to have mm -hmm. that role. Right, right, yeah, and embracing something, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so beautifully said, and I think it comes through so lovingly throughout mm -hmm. the film. I really, really enjoyed it as much as it tore me apart, <laughs> but I can't wait for it to devastate lovingly <laughs> more people as they watch it and to be able to kind of feel that catharsis. It was so well done. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Thank you so for much. your thoughtfulness. Yeah. I wanted to ask, just kind of generally speaking, I know you said that you kind of got the idea just kind of watching people of New York, but some of the experiences that they go through, especially when talking about the idea of forming this family and having these kind of resentments within it from the way that, you know, the dad kind of took in Rachel and said that this is my daughter. Um, how many of these experiences, I guess, were personal or from uh, experiences that were told from you? Um, how did you kind of curate these this family? I I would say that yes, inspired by experiences and people and even strangers that I walk around in the city and I, I can get a sense, a glimpse of people's lives. But also I'm at an age now where I have uh, parents that are elderly and I definitely, uh, you know, in, in a caretaking facility in my own life, uh, just in terms of trying to take care of them, but also just the a reality of what's ahead has become ever increasing apparent. And so this was, this is definitely a personal story, but also a personal story of just trying to deal with something before it happens to me. Like, so a lot of it's imagination, but just imagination of like dealing with fears that I have or hopes that I have and put possibilities. It was a way for me to experience something as best as I could before going through it. Cause I have a feeling that when I'm on the other side of it, I'll be a very different person. I don't know if I'd want to tell this story or mm -hmm. even, I have no idea who I'll be. It just, it's very apparent to me that I'll be somebody else. It's that, it's that clear. So um, I find myself leaning on the film a lot as I've gone, continued to go through it with my own parents. Like this is a, a film that I've needed in terms of just having something to look forward to, the joy of making this film, the joy of these performances, the humor that's in there, the the, the foundation of just reminding myself of what I love about this city and its possibilities and filmmaking has been a, has been a, an important crutch for me right now. You know, it's it's interesting because you were talking about you know this time coming soon, and we are very much in a sandwich kind of generation where, you know, the kind of baby boomers are starting to need that care. And we have this generation that are having children, but then also needing to parent their parents and having to take care of them and lead them kind of into that next stage. And I thought it's, it was so interesting that this was, you know, his three daughters, because the people kind of taking on the brunt of that are women. Women kind of make up something like 61% of uh, caretakers of their parents currently. Um, was that kind of uh, part of why you decided to highlight it as women? 
Yeah, I felt the, uh, I think because I was writing, at a certain point I was clearly like had specific ideas uh, that who these characters and who these actors were going to be, um, that I, 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 I was, it was a way for me to acknowledge that I was telling uh, a woman's story, but not from the point of view of the woman, that it was his three daughters, it was the way that they see each other through his eyes rather than anything, that they were depicting, they were trying to imagine how they, how their own father saw the, each of them. And the reality was that the, the whole, you know, the answer is in the title, that he sees them as his daughters. Yeah. And that, that question of whether Rachel feels that about herself or whether Katie or Christina are questioning that about Rachel or really truly each other because who's, who was a father? He was a very different father to all three of them. But in the end of the day, he was their father. And I think that, I think that difference that he talks about, like that you can be related to somebody, you don't necessarily means that you're a parent and you can be not related and you are, that it's family. That family is something not blood related in that way. Um, and that's been very, very true to myself. Like I, I have a kid that I've been talking to since I've been in a stroller that we talk every single day to this day. Like I consider him my brother, but we just happen to grow up two blocks away from each other. You know, it's connections like that that are so important. Um, and we kind of see that a little bit between Rachel and Benji, just in the way that they interact. But of course, then we see that tension between someone like uh, Carrie Coon's character and then Benji and, yeah. you know, squaring off against each other. I think that that tension is so important, but it's also kind of another form that the grief in the movie takes. We see it not just in kind of crying and not just in sadness, but there it takes so many different forms throughout the film. Can you talk to me about kind of some of the different forms that grief does take and why it was so important to show it in so many different forms? Well, I had this, I think what you said about generation of just like going through, um, you know, friends suddenly getting married, friends having babies, and now suddenly, and then friends that don't make it because of sickness, and now suddenly dealing with parents, like there's this wave of, it feels all around me, right? And, and, and these different feelings that happen, not only uh, in the process, but from a moment to moment, was something that I really wanted to, to chase down as best as I could with film, especially with how time moved, how time moved when you knew the inevitable was gonna happen. It, f it feels like it has this effect where suddenly, yeah, like days very much matter suddenly, hours really matter, minutes suddenly matter, and you're trying to figure out, do, am, do I need to be here for this moment? Do I not want to be there? Are they waiting for me to leave so that they can go? Like, you're you're questioning time in a very, very different way. And, and in fact, and time, is, in, back is changing for you in this way that I, I needed to get down into on film as best as I could because it was something A, that I felt like I hadn't seen so much, but something I also, I just had to try to have some kind of understanding of how could, how could time be this flexible and then this strict and then so finite when yeah. suddenly they're gone and it's just, that's, that's that. It just happened, it felt so far away and here it is. You know? Yeah. Yes. 100%. And I think you can feel that so much throughout the film. It really is a beautiful film. Um, the cast is phenomenal and they do such a good job. Um, I, we didn't get a chance to speak about Jay Sanders, but he's fantastic in uh, his part with it as well. So thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to talk with us about his three daughters. Thank I you. can't wait for more people to see it. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>